Chapter 11, Section 2 is on space coordinates and vectors in space. This is an extension of what we did in Section 11.1, .1, where all of those vectors were in the plane, having only two components. Now we're looking at vectors in space. We're looking at three components, three dimensions. Our objectives are to understand the three-dimensional rectangular coordinate system, analyze vectors in space, and use three-dimensional vectors to solve real-life problems. First, let's look at coordinates in space. We're so used to looking at coordinates x, comma, y in the plane, we're going to extend this to coordinates in space. In space, we um, it is typical to draw the in perspective drawing, even though it's a flat screen here, um, this is depicted in a way so that it represents a three-dimensional space. The x-axis moves out kind of to the lower left. The positive x-axis is pointing out to your lower left. The positive y-axis pointing to the lower right. And then up and down is your vertical, oops, sorry, vertical uh, axis C. Now we have what's called the xy plane. If you just look at the where the z is equal to zero, you have the xy plane. We have the xc plane and the yz plane. These are three planes that slice up space into what we call eight octants. Eight octants. The positive octant one is where all the x, y's, and z's are positive. Um, now, in two-dimensional graphs, your x and y axis divide your paper into four quadrants. Well, these three planes divide space into eight octants. <clears throat> the first octant is the one which all three coordinates are positive. A point P in space is determined by an ordered triple. Here are some points in the three-dimensional coordinate system. We have a point here. Let's look at this one. The coordinates are 2, negative 5, and 3. To get to this location in space, you can begin at the origin, move 2 units in a positive x direction, move 5 units in a negative y direction, and move 3 units up. So these little dotted pink lines here help to give you a perspective of the location of the coordinate in space. Let's look at this point down here. The components are 3, 3, negative 2. From the origin, move positive 3 in the x direction, positive 3 in the y direction. You see that little parallelogram? And then drop down from the xy plane, negative 2 units. Here's another point, 1, 6, 0. You move 1 in the x direction, 6 units in the y direction, 0 units up. And this point has coordinates negative 2, 5, and 4. Move 2 in the negative x direction, 5 in the y direction, positive y direction, and 4 units up to get to this location in space. We uh, will typically use this right-handed system as was illustrated on the previous page. Just think about you standing up and pointing your right hand out, and that right hand is the positive x-axis. Your left hand pointing out is your positive y-axis, and your a line going vertically straight out your head would be the positive z-axis. There are some books, resources that use a left-handed system, although we, we won't typically be using that in this class. If it's a left-handed system, your left hand would denote the positive x-axis. Now to find the distance between two points in space, say the points in space have coordinates x1, y1, z1 is point P, and Q has coordinates x2, y2, z2, you can find the distance from P to Q. You can use the Pythagorean theorem twice. First, to get a distance from P to this point right below the Q. And then you take that point, find the distance between that point and Q. And when you put those together, it's actually a pretty interesting proof of how we can find the points, distance between two points in space. That formula ends up working out to be very similar to our distance formula in the plane. We're just adding this z component here. 
the formula for the distance between two points in space where the first point has coordinates x1, y1, z1, the second point has coordinates x2, y2, z2, then the distance is the square root of the quantity x2 minus x1 squared plus the quantity y2 minus y1 squared plus the quantity z2 minus z1 squared. Let's use that formula to find the distance between these two points. The first point has coordinates 2, negative 1, 3, and the second point has coordinates 1, 0, negative 2. You can pause the video now, try this on your own, and then restart the video to check your solution. When you work it out by plugging in the corresponding points and simplifying the results, you get that the distance between those two points is the square root of 27. Now you can simplify the radical here. Square root of 27 can also be written as 3 radical 3. Now vectors in space. We just looked at points in space. We can now extend that to vectors in space. In space, Vectors are denoted by those ordered triples where the components of a vector v has components v1, v2, v3. You see vector v in the illustration here. The components, it's drawn from the origin. It's v1 units in the x direction, v2 units in the y direction, and v3 units in the z direction. The zero vector is denoted by 0, 0, 0. And using the unit vectors i, has components 1, 0, 0. That's the positive x-axis, one unit long. J has components 0, 1, 0. And K has components 0, 0, 1. So you can write the vector using the components, or you can write the vector using the i, j, k vectors. Now, if the vector v starts at a point p, with coordinates p1, p2, p3. That's your initial point, and your terminal point is q with coordinates q1, q2, q3. Then you can find the three components of the vector v by taking the terminal point and subtracting the initial point. So v1 is going to be q1 minus p1, and v2 is q2 minus p2, v3 is q3 minus p3. So um, this is also something that you'll find in your textbook, vectors in space. If we have these two vectors, u and v, with the components given, we can say that u and v are equal only if their components are equal. And the component form can be found by taking the terminal point and subtracting the initial point. The third property that we have here is the vector length. The magnitude of the vector v is found by taking the square root of each of the components squared add, add together. And a unit vector is found by taking a vector v dividing by its magnitude. And you can add vectors together as well as perform scalar multiplication. Let's do this example where we're finding the component form and the magnitude of a vector, having the initial point, negative 2, 3, 1, and the terminal point, 0, negative 4, 4. So starting with your terminal point and subtracting the initial points, you can find the three components. Uh, 2, negative 7, and 3 are the components. And then using the distance formula, finding the magnitude, you take the mag square root of each of those components squared, add it together to get the square root of 62. Now the unit vector in the direction of V is found by taking the vector components and dividing by its magnitude. So the magnitude is the square root of 62, and the components are 2, negative 7, 3. You can divide each of those components by the square root of 62. Oops. Okay, now this example I'll work through with you. 
on the video, you can find the distance between points P and Q, find the vector PQ, find the magnitude of PQ, and a unit vector in the direction of PQ. There's a lot of steps in this example here. Okay. So to find the distance, using the distance formula, we're going to take the Q1 um, is negative 1, x sub 2 minus x sub 1, negative 1 minus 4 quantity squared, plus 7 minus negative 5 quantity squared, plus negative 3 minus 2 quantity squared. Order of operations, uh, we're going to first simplify what's in the parentheses to get negative 5 quantity squared plus 7 minus a negative 5, that's 12 quantity squared plus negative 3 minus 2 is a negative 5 quantity squared. We're going to Square each of those and add the result together. To get the to get the square root of 194. That's the distance between point P and point Q using the distance formula. Now we want to find vector P Q. So vector PQ is found by taking the components, um, taking the terminal point and subtracting the initial point, negative 1 minus 4, 7 minus a negative 5, and negative 3 minus 2. Simplifying the result to get negative 5, 12, and negative 5 are the, the components of that PQ vector. Now you may recognize that the components here are essentially the same values that we found in that intermediate step using the distance formula. Now let's find the magnitude of PQ. The magnitude of PQ, we use those vertical bars, double bars there, it's found by taking the square root of the square of each of those components added together. So it's negative 5 squared plus 12 squared plus a negative 5 squared. And we get the square root of 194. So using the magnitude formula or the distance formula, we get the same result. And then finally, a unit vector, that unit vector that's going in the same direction, but only one unit long, is found by taking the components of the vector PQ and dividing by the magnitude of that vector PQ. And what that's going to look like is if we take each of those components and divide it by the square root of 194, we get negative 5 over the square root of 194, 12 over the square root of 194, and negative 5 over the square root of 194. Those are your three components of the unit vector. It's one unit long going in the same direction as your vector PQ.